I wanted to take you guys through a recent project that I've been working on. One of my subscribers, Soldier 53 Flyer, has shipped me this AeroSky quadcopter that he is uh, wanting me to help him configure for a, for a local auction in his hometown. So the goal is to get this AeroSky quad configured so a novice can, you know, whoever wins the auction has the ability to pretty much pick it up and fly it. Now, what's interesting about this AeroSky setup is it comes with a pretty decent manual. Um, it's the RTF version and I, I'll, I'll post a link to it. On their site it ran about, I believe, uh, $199. That comes with all the uh, gear, pretty much RTF including the transmitter and you can see there's some pretty basic steps setting up your radio connecting the receiver the battery um, unlocking and locking your flight controller and then you're pretty much ready to go but from what I've seen and what Larry soldier 53 flyer has told me is that uh, it's not that easy to fly out of the box and I, I've confirmed that this actually flies with the uh, multi Wii flight controller so what I'm going to do in this video is actually talk through loading the firmware and configuring the multi Wii for both uh, acro mode as well as auto level mode. And if you'll notice here on the receiver I have a channel 5 that I went ahead and wired up uh, to an auxiliary port in the multi Wii and that what's, that's what we'll use with this transmitter, the AeroSky transmitter to configure the switch to go from manual or acro mode to auto level mode. So the first thing you're going to want to do before we load firmware or begin configuration is obviously we need this uh, micro USB cable that and I actually took this from my DJI NASA so it's just a standard cable uh, that you're going to use over your USB port. Okay before we load the multi Wii firmware and begin configuration let me just show you some of the prerequisite software that we need to use so in this uh, tutorial we're actually going to be using multi Wii 2.0 and I won't go into all the details but that's the one that I found that works the best with the AeroSky and this is the actual uh, RTF version of the AeroSky quadcopter it's a pretty good deal you know for $200 for transmitter quadcopter flight controller and the whole setup and so if you notice this uh, instruction manual which is here that's just I'll post all these links in the description and this is just a good reference uh, as you're going through this and finally the Arduino uh, IDE you'll need to have installed so that you can basically download the multi Wii software configure it and then upload it to your multi Wii controller after you download your multi Wii zip file, you'll unzip it and you'll notice two folders. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the software. And this is, like I said, this is multi Wii 2.0. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it and that will load uh, the Arduino IDE. Okay, so there are a few things to make note of in the uh, IDE. And starting with config.h, which is part of the project, you'll see your different uh, multi-copter settings here. Now, originally, quad X was commented out, so we just uncomment it. So we'll have the quad X configuration. And the one other item that we're going to want to address is the actual uh, sensor definitions. Now, the multi Wii that ships with the uh, AeroSky quadcopter is uses the Invensys MPU6050 and this is a accelerometer slash gyroscope uh, configuration in one chip so we'll, uh, this was originally commented out so we'll uncomment it and save that save and then the one other somewhat tricky item and I think it's fairly specific to this a quadcopter is the actual address of the uh, accelerometer gyroscope, the MPU 6050. So if we look at this, this is actually part of the documentation that ships with the quad. You go down here and you'll notice that the address is 0, 
by d0. And it was originally uh, 0 by d2. So I changed that to d0, save, because what happens is that when you run the multi-Wii uh, GUI, the, u the user interface, uh, it wouldn't recognize my uh, accelerometer. So changing this as recommended by the instructions did the trick. Okay, and the one other gotcha that took me a while to figure out with the uh, AeroSky transmitter is that, let me go ahead and show you these settings called min check and max check. Now by default, I think these are set at something like 1100 and 1900. In most cases, you're, you're gonna leave the defaults and use your transmitter uh, configuration to set the endpoints. Well, unfortunately with the AeroSky transmitter, you don't have the ability to do that other than trim it. So I had to uh, redefine the min check and ma max check pulse width so I could arm the multi wee board and uh, do some auto trimming as well. So that's just something that's very specific to the AeroSky transmitter and I uh, wanted to point it out for the sake of uh, this setup. Okay, finally we have all of our uh, settings in place, our changes, and we're going to make sure that we go up here and we have the Arduino Pro 5 volt 16 megahertz a board set up for this AeroSky quad and then what we can do next is actually take this uh, sketch as, as they're called in the Arduino world and let's go ahead and upload it to the board so I'll click upload and you can see down here where it compiles and then uh, loads the firmware onto the board. Okay, you can see that it's done uploading, so next we'll go ahead and dive into the MultiWii GUI and take a look at the settings. And as part of the download package that we download the 2.0 version, there comes a configuration tool. So I'm on a Mac, you'll go into your the folder for your respective system and launch the graphical user interface. And what we'll do f uh, first is we'll actually select the port that we're going, that our multi-Wii is connected to. And then we'll click start. And so you can see uh, these traces from the accelerometer and gyroscope coming across. Now if I actually, you can hear me moving the quad around and see the impact of that. And you'll notice here over on the right side, the quad representation, the orientation changes and moves around as I move the quad. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and read the default parameters for our PIDs for roll, pitch, and yaw. And let's start by, actually I'm going to connect the battery to the quad and turn on the transmitter. And what we should see is that our stick inputs are where we want them. So we'll take a look at throttle. You can see I'm moving that up. Our yaw, our yaw is nice and centered. Roll, pitch. So they're all at about 1500 uh, PWM for each stick input, which is pretty much where you want to be. Okay, so for the next step, I'm actually referring to the manual as shown on the uh, AeroSky quadcopter page and I'll post that link in the description and so what we'll do is we'll actually go next and uh, let's see we've taken a look at our transmitter settings everything looks okay right there now we'll move down to sensor calibration which is very important so if I go back to the GUI and I'm just gonna go ahead and click calibrate accelerometer Make sure it's completely level on your desk or on the floor and it will go through the calibration process. Okay, so next up what we'll do is we're going to set our auto level to our channel 5 switch. Now as I mentioned earlier in the video, I wired channel 5 from uh, the receiver to the auxiliary port on the multi-wee auxiliary 1. And I'm going to go over here and you can select basically what uh, channel, you know, low, mid, or high range that you want to trigger 
uh, the auto level. So I've selected high. Now as you watch, I'm going to switch my channel 5 switch on the, tra the AeroSky transmitter and you'll notice that that has level is now enabled and I'll toggle it off. And so that demonstrates that uh, by default we're going to be in acro mode and then we trigger our switch and then we'll go to level mode. Okay, and finally, if you look at the manual, there's some recommended uh, PID settings, and we'll take a look at our default settings for the multi wees So we'll go ahead and bump these up. I'm going to bump these up uh, as recommended by the manual. So we're going to go 9, and then 40, 40, 0. And I've, I really haven't worked with these PID settings before, so it'll be interesting just based on this manual to see how close we are. Okay, so those are set, and the next thing we want to do is uh, write this configuration to our multi we Okay, so that's done. Okay, before we fly, let's go ahead and do uh, some basic calibration. The first thing we'll do is if we go down and left with the, yut the rudder, and we pull back, you see the LED blinking on the board, that's the gyro calibration. And now we'll do the accelerometer calibration. We'll go up and to the left and then pitch back. You can see that LED blinking. And so that's the process for calibrating both the gyro and the accelerometer. And the last test we'll do before we give it a test flight is we'll arm it. So everything appears to be working well. And then we'll disarm and the multi wee is responding nicely so let's take it for a test flight. So I'll go ahead and start off in acro mode and then we'll flip to auto level mode and see how it behaves. So let's try this out. So that's acro mode, very, very stable. And I mean, it's, it's actually really nice and smooth. Not too responsive, so I think from a novice pilot perspective, it would be just perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to auto level mode and we'll kind of see how that behaves. So, flip the switch. see it come back to center. Now let's just see how it how it's trimmed. I'm gonna go ahead and just get it hovering right in the middle and then I'm gonna let off the pitch and roll stick. So it kind of drifts to the left a little bit. So we'll go ahead and go through the uh, accelerometer trim procedure. Okay let me go ahead and demonstrate the accelerometer trimming feature which is pretty cool. So if you're in the field um, and your let's say your quad is kind of rolling to the right, what you can do with your motors disarmed is take your throttle all the way up and if you watch my quad I'll actually trim to the left to counter that right uh, roll movement. So I'm going to push left and you'll notice that the LED on the quad is blinking when I hit that left movement. If I want to trim back, I can go that way or go down for pitch. And you just do that a few clicks, bring your throttle back, and then arm your motors and take it for a flight and just see how the uh, leveling is working out for you. So after doing the accelerometer trimming, let's just take a quick look at the hover. I'm having to get a little, give a little bit of input, but not bad. And so what you can do is if you're in auto level mode, you just land, disarm, and then you can uh, do your trim again. So I noticed it was rolling a little bit to the left. So I would go up and then just 
roll right one or two clicks, and then set it, and then take it for a test flight. So that was my initial go at using the multi-Wii flight controller with the AeroSky quadcopter, and all in all, it went fairly well. So if you have any questions or comments, you know, suggestions about a configuration, please post them in the comments below. And I plan on hopefully following up with a KK uh, flight controller how-to on this AeroSky quadcopter. Thanks for watching.